वेलकम एवरीबडी एंड इन दिस लेक्चर आई विल टीच यू अबाउट ए ओ पी बी ओ आई एंड इट्स असेसमेंट नाउ यू ऑल नो द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ एओ पी करेक्ट वॉट इज द फुल फॉर्म प्लीज टेल असोसिएशन ऑफ पर्सन वॉट इज द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ बी ओ आई बॉडी ऑफ इंडिविजुअल्स ओके If I ask you, what is the difference between the two? You know, right? Very good. The difference is basically, अरे कुछ बुद्धू लोग होते हैं भूल जाते हैं उनके लिए, right? So not for you, but still listen and try to recollect what I taught in the first lectures. So what is association of persons? If there is an association in which not only individuals are there but companies are there. Also, like uh, Hindu undivided families are there. Like Sikindrabad club is there. Yeah, Rotary club is there. So in these clubs, what happens is individual membership is also there. Corporate membership is also there. These type of associations are called as association of persons. And in our locality, we create uh, Ganesh Utsav Samiti, right? Ganpati Bappa Moria. So in that Ganesh Utsav Samiti, there is no company or anything as such. Our bastis Shamu, Ramu, right? These people create a group, and they create the Ganesh Utsav Samiti, Payalal Nagar Youth Association. So the name may say it is association, but in the eyes of income tax law, it is consisting of only individuals. So we call it as. body of individuals okay so what is the difference between two clear association of persons include various persons which we discussed in section 2 clause 31 right in body of individuals only individuals are there this is the difference very good but will it make any difference in income tax the answer is no from income tax perspective the taxation is alike for both both will be taxed in the same way same process no change so no problem in income tax very good now this lecture i am teaching you aop and boi assessment it is really tough so i want to make it very easy for you taking a story and i'll connect the same story till end of this lecture dekho making complex things simple is my job and let's take the example for the same suppose vidya bharati is an association right a wonderful initiative by rss now in vidya bharati suppose there are three members ram Sham, Gan Sham. Okay, now these three are the members. Now you may say, sir, body of individual. Arey yar, from income tax perspective, doesn't make any difference, right? So let's continue with the same example, right? Ram, Sham, Gan Sham are the three members in an association called as Vidya Bharati, and truly they are working very well. Okay, now continue with the discussion. now how to tax how to compute the tax the answer is same like normal business income so we learned so many provisions under the pgvp chapter yes or no under house property also under capital gains under other sources now aop being an association will anyhow not get salary so that's why i covered other four heads so how to compute income we discussed and that four heads right same way the provisions will be applicable so will there be any change in the provisions no all that provisions will apply as it is right so no change but uh, there is a section 40 ba what is section section 40 ba it will put some disallowances that means suppose in pnl account they show certain expenditure which is not right like example they show 
salary to member of AOP. Now, as per section 40 BA, it is not right. In accounting, you can show that. But as per income tax, it is not right. So, what we will do? Salary is deducted, right? So, we will add it back. So, when I say 40 BA disallowance, I am telling you that we have to add it back. Nothing more than that. Clear? So, what I said? The AOP BOI's income will be assessed as per the normal provisions of income tax. As per simply all the normal provisions will apply. But 40 BA disallowance will also be applicable. Now, let's start with the first disallowance which I have to teach you. The first disallowance is about interest. If the AOP that means Vidya Bharati pays any interest to Ram, Sham or Ghansham. Who paying interest? Vidya Bharati. To whom? To the members Ram, Sham, Ghansham. Three members. Okay. Then that interest is disallowed. That means when we calculate the income of Vidya Bharati, right? The interest paid to these members will be added back. Clear? First point I am discussing in interest. Now, let me explain you further in detail. Now, that interest may relate to any capital invested by Ram Shyam Ghansham or may relate to any loan given by Ram Shyam Ghansham. Kuch bhi ho sakta hai na? Loan bhi ho sakta hai, interest bhi ho sakta hai. Uh, loan or capital but if AOP pays any interest to member that interest is disallowed that means when we calculate income of Vidya Bharati the AOP the interest will be added back but sometimes it can be two way also right AOP paying interest to Ram Shyam Ghansham and even Ram Shyam Ghansham also pay interest to AOP. That can happen. Suppose on capital of Ram Shyam Ghansham, AOP is paying interest to them. And suppose Shyam withdrawn the money from AOP. So on the drawings, this Shyam is paying interest to AOP. Now, if it is both way, Vidya Bharati paying to these members and these members paying to Vidya Bharati. Both is happening. Then what to do? Then they simply say one thing that whatever excess interest paid by Vidya Bharati that will be added back. Simple. So in simple language the excess of debit interest over credit interest will be added back. So, debit interest for AOP, Vidya Bharati, means expenditure. That means Vidya Bharati paying to members. Credit interest means by interest on drawings. So, that is credit interest in the PNL account. That Vidya Bharati is earning income. Correct? Now, I want to simply tell you, if there is only debit interest, only debit, no credit, then entire interest will be added back. But if there is debit also, credit also. Now compare. If debit is more, then add back. If credit is more, then ignore. What I said, if debit is more, add back. If credit is more, ignore. Simple. Clear? Very good. Now, this debit credit comparison for all the members together we should do or each individual member we should check separately. Doubt should come, right? So, it is individual member separately we should check. Okay? Suppose, let's assume Ghansham's uh, example. Ghansham and Vidya Bharati. Now, Vidya Bharati paid 10,000 rupees to Ghansham and received 2,000 rupees from Ghansham. Okay. 
So for Vidya Bharati, it is two interest paid to Ghansham, 10,000. By interest on drawings by Ghansham, 2,000. Now tell me, debit is more or credit is more? Sir, debit is 10,000, credit is 2,000. So obviously debit is more. So what we'll do? We'll add the excess. So how much is excess? 10,000 minus 2,000. So 8,000 will be added back. Suppose debit is 10,000 as I said and credit is 12,000 by interest on drawings 12,000. Then, then because credit is more, we will totally ignore. This you should be able to understand. Okay. This clarity you should have. Now let's come to the further second point, third point also. Now, Suppose Ram is receiving interest from AOP. But you know, Ram is not receiving interest in his own capacity. Actually, Ram is the head that is Karta of a Hindu undivided family. Right? Now, what happened is Vidya Bharati took loan from this HUF. Now, Vidya Bharati should pay interest to HUF. But because head itself is Ram and he is a member of the AOP also, so AOP paid the interest to Ram. Now, I am asking a simple question. Will that interest go to the personal account of Ram or to the HUF account? is just representing HUF, correct? So, the interest paid by AOP will go to HUF, even though Ram is receiving it. In this case, the interest paid to member will be allowed as a deduction. Interest paid to member will be allowed as a deduction. So, no disallowance. Because is member getting it? Is member going to retain it? If the answer is yes, then add back. But here member is going to again repay to HUF. Deposit in HUF account. So, not added back. Not disallowed. Next point I have to teach you. Third point you see. Sometimes what happens? The member is receiving interest as a representative of some other person. Then AOP is paying to member, but the member has to repay to some other person because the member is just a representative here. So in that case, the interest paid to member will be allowed as deduction. Okay, very good. Why it is allowed as deduction? Because it is not in his own capacity he is receiving. He is receiving as a representative. This language you should be clear about. So, first three points clear. Very good. Now, if AOP pays salary to Ram Shyam Ghansham or remuneration to Ram Shyam Ghansham or some bonus commission to Ram Shyam or Ghansham, then the salary remuneration, commission, bonus, these four things will be added back. Totally, all the four will be exactly whatever it is, will be added back. Now, if it is shown in the p &L account, on the debit side, add back. Now, when you solve the questions, they will give bonus paid to employees, 10 rupees. Bonus paid to members of AOP, 8 rupees. So, bonus paid to members of AOP will be added back. Bonus to all employees is allowed under section 36, right? Of the PGVP chapter. Very good. This you should keep in mind. So, salary, interest, commission, bonus paid by AOP to members will be added back. Exactly. Very good. Now the next question comes. Okay. We understood what to add back. How much to add back. But how to... Till now whatever I taught. 
I just taught you section 40 B A. Disallowance portion I taught to you. So till this point, all the normal provisions of income tax plus this 40 B A disallowance together helped you to compute the total income of Vidya Bharati AOP. But is it over if you just determine the total income? Are we are studying income tax, right? So it's not over if you just compute the total income. You have to also calculate tax. Now my question comes, what is the rate of tax applicable to AOP? For that, there is two points, A and B. If the share of members is known, the tax rates are different. If the share of members is not known that is covered in B, the tax rates are totally different. Okay. So, A member share is known, B member share not known. Come to the next part. If suppose member share is known, still will there be any change in special rates of tax? Because ordinary rates of tax may change, but special rates never change. Suppose you are trading in stock exchange. You, that means Vidya Bharati, is trading in stock exchange and earned some long term capital gain. Then under 112A, 10% is the rate of tax. Simple. If Vidya Bharati sold certain long term capital asset and it should be taxed under 112. Dekho, if it is stock market transactions long term, 10%. Other than that, any long term like sale of building, sale of jewellery, something like that, then 20% is the rate of tax. If short term capital gain under 111A from stock market transactions, definitely 15%. Okay. And if it is winnings from lottery, it is 30%. So now this long term, this short term and this lottery income will be taxed at that particular rates which I said. Long term capital gains from stock market transactions 112A 10%. Long term capital gains from other than 112A 20%. Short term capital gains from stock market transactions 111A 15% is the rate of tax. And finally winnings from lottery will be taxed under 30 percent rate okay so this way we have to understand the tax rate now these tax rates will be same if the member share is known or member share is not known then where the difference is the difference is in other than these incomes suppose if member share is known as we are discussing then what happens is the other incomes like business income, house property income, other sources income, these are there. Na? That will be taxed based on the member's income. Oh my God, is it? Yes. I am telling you Vidya Bharati is AOP. Now AOP will be taxed at what tax rate will be decided based on what is Ram's income, what is Shyam's income, what is Ganshyam's income. That's why I took the example. Tomorrow, if you can get confused also, you will remember with story, right? So, Vidya Bharati's tax rate is determined by the income of, individual income of Ram Sham, Gan Sham. Clear? Now, I am telling you. If Ram, Sham and Gan Sham, all the three members income, other than from AOP, right? Now, from AOP, they got salary, remuneration, interest, commission, bonus, sub. Chodho. Other than from AOP, how much they earned is the question. If they earned something which is less than taxable income, which is less than taxable income, then what will happen? If suppose they earn more than taxable income, anyone earn more than taxable income, then what? 
So like this, questions are there and answers are there in the table. See the table. If suppose, if suppose Ram's age is 40 years, individual, so up to 2,50 nil. Suppose Shyam's age is 62 years, up to 3 lakhs basic exemption, so not taxable till 3 lakhs. If suppose Ganshyam's income is 85 years, then 5 lakhs is the basic exemption for them, correct? So, if their income is less than taxable income, Ram's individual income, Shyam's individual income, Ganshyam's individual income, but in these individual incomes, we did not include AOP income. Okay, they have their personal income plus AOP income, correct? So, I am only talking about their personal income, not AOP income. Now, their personal income is less than taxable limit. Then, what tax rate AOP will pay? Slab rate of taxation. So, AOP will be assessed under slab rate of tax, right? AOP will be assessed to slab rate. So, tax rate will be slab rate only. Clear? Very good. Clear? Now, okay, for AOP it is slab rate, that's nice. But what about the members? Dekho, if all the members income individually is less than basic exemption, less than taxable income. Now, AOP is taxed at slab rate, but slab rate is less tax, correct? Less tax, actually less tax. Okay, so when it is less tax, whatever these members get from AOP, whatever these members get from AOP, like salary, interest, remuneration, commission, bonus, that will be added in the member's income. Now, what I am telling, if you got confused, no problem at all. Again, I will help you to understand. Listen carefully. What I said, suppose Ram's income is 2 lakh. Shyam's income is suppose 2 lakh 40,000. Ganshyam's income is 2 lakh 20,000. Now, tell me, do anybody of these three have a personal income which is taxable? No, all are less than 2,50,000. So, each one will not be taxed at all. So, in this case, whatever AOP's income we calculated till now, that will be assessed with slab rate of taxation. Clear? Very good. Now, AOP is taxed at slab rate. After AOP tax computation is done, then again members tax computation will do correct. Ram's income will be computed. Shyam's income will be computed. Right? Now, Ram's income is 2 lakhs. Personal income. But in Ram's personal income, AOP's share of profit. AOP's salary what Ram got. AOP's remuneration, commission, interest what Ram got. Will be added for computing Ram's tax liability. Okay. So, now Ram's income decides AOP's tax rate and AOP's tax will decide Ram's tax liability. Okay. This is how both impact each other. Clear? Very good. Now, suppose if any member income is more than the slab rate, yeah, more than the taxable income, any member, income is, any one member also, income is more than the taxable income. In that case, us paristhiti mein, AOP will be taxed at maximum marginal rate. Now, maximum marginal rate I taught in the first class itself, first lectures itself, in the unit 1, correct? So, AOP will be taxed at maximum marginal rate. Suppose, now, first case what I said, Ram, Sham, Gansham, each income is less than taxable income. Ram 2 lakh, Sham 2 lakh 20 and Gansham 2 lakh 40. All are less than taxable limits. Then AOP is taxed at slab rate. Okay. And whatever these members earn personally plus AOP's income 
they will have to pay tax on it. But if suppose any one member like Ram has 2 lakhs income, Sham has 3 lakhs income, Gansham has 1 lakh 50 income. So Sham's income is more than taxable income, correct? So in this case what happens, AOP will be taxed at. Now because Sham has taxable income, AOP is punished here. AOP's income is taxed at maximum marginal rate. That means highest tax rate possible. Okay. But suppose in this AOP Vidya Bharati, Ram Sham Ghansham are there. But a foreign company is also included. Right. Now in this case, foreign company has highest rates of tax. Yes or no? Correct. So what I wanted to convey to you, in that case what they said, that the AOP's income, let us divide into two parts. One is the share attributable to this foreign company. That will be taxed at that higher rate. And second one, all other members, their incomes are taxed or their share of income from AOP will be taxed to AOP only, will be taxed to Vidya Bharati only at maximum marginal rate. Clear? Now, one point I will tell about third column which I discussed till now. Presently, the maximum marginal rate is defined under section 2 clause 29c. Under which section? 2 clause 29c. And maximum marginal rate is highest tax rate 30% plus highest surcharge 37% plus highest cess 4%. When we do the total, it comes to 42.744%. How much? 42.744%. So much they have to pay. And in today's world, if you compute, even foreign company don't have such tax rate. Okay? Foreign companies also don't have such tax rate. Just a minute. Rate. Okay. Clear? Yes or no? Just try to confirm that am I going right with the calculations and it is absolutely right. So, what happens is the last column which I discussed, na, if uh, higher rate than the maximum marginal rate is there, then for that member, uh, we have to apply that higher rate and all other members share maximum marginal rate. This is redundant in today's context. It is there in the law, we taught. But in today's context, it is redundant. So what is finally applicable today? Maximum marginal rate. So simply see, if you see this table, again I am repeating, if Ram, Sham, Ganshams income is less than taxable limit, then AOP is taxed at slab rate, nothing more than that. If Ram, Sham, Ganshams income is more than the tax rate, then definitely AOP is again taxed at slab rate. But Ram, Sham, Ganshams will get the benefit of rebate under section 86. Now, please understand, rebate is given to individuals, not to Vidya Bharati OP. Okay? Now, in the first two columns, I simply said, whether the income of the members is less than the slab, that is taxable income, or more than the slab. No problem. In both the cases, I said, slab rate is applicable. But what I said to you, oh, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. If it is more than the slab, maximum marginal rate. What I said, more than the slab, maximum marginal rate. Clear? Very good. Now, come to the next point which I have to discuss with you. The next point which I have to teach you is the AOP's rate of taxes we did. Right? After that, 
if the share is unknown then what to do if the share is unknown long term capital gain under 112 a 10% long term capital gain under 112 20% short term capital gain under 111 a it is 15% winnings from lottery again 30% what about others other incomes if share is unknown then what about other incomes simple other incomes are taxable at maximum marginal rate now here i don't want to teach you the category different different parts because all are redundant in today's context so simply remember tax at maximum marginal rate that's it okay now when you see a question you have to decide whether it is whether the share is known or whether the share is unknown so suppose in the question they say Vidya Bharati is an AOP where Ram, Shyam, Ghansham are the members with 1 is to 1 is to 1 ratio, profit sharing ratio. Then it is very clear the share is known. If they say Ram, Shyam, Ghansham have equal share, the share is known, very clear. But if nothing as such is written, which can define their share then we can say that share is unknown at the time of creating the AOP or afterwards still the share of members is unknown then we can say simply it is unknown that's it okay till now super clarity you got in all the concepts what I said to you now come to the next concept Okay, AOP is as such simple, nothing to worry about. Okay, now let me tell you what to do with members income. Here is the real challenge. Members income also, they simply said that where the share is known or share is not known because that will decide, correct? If share is known, the treatment is different. If share is not known, the treatment is different. So that's why they said we will discuss from two perspectives. So members income we are going to calculate the income as well as members tax. For that we fixed that share is known. The share may be 1 is to 2 is to 3, 2 is to 3 is to 4 something like that. Some ratio is there or they gave descriptive like share is equal hmm? something like that. Then in that case interest salary received by the members is taxable as actual is taxable as actual and balance will be shared in agreed ratio so salary will be taken actual basis like ram salary is different sham salary is different gansham salary is different their interest is different their commission is different their bonus is different so that's why they simply said take actual basis okay that's it but balance income is there now balance profit is there now that how to divide there also the share is known so divide in the agreed ratio now when we prepared the statement in that we wrote particulars ram sham gansham now we wrote ram's personal income then we also added ram's salary from the firm sorry AOP interest commission bonus from the AOP all that we added but now tell me Ram also took a loan are a note one I am teaching okay if Ram also took a loan to invest money into the AOP now he is also paying interest on that loan so that interest should be allowed as deduction okay under section 67 it's allowed interest can be deducted also right if he has taken the loan to invest in AOP business and ultimately he is paying interest so that's allowed as deduction now when we talk about members income member gets salary from AOP so that salary is taxable under salary head right all other incomes like uh, interest commission bonus they can be taxed under 
PGBP or other sources. Okay, as simple as that. So under the respective heads, it is taxed. Now the next question I want to ask you really that AOP has claimed the deduction under ATC to ATU. Certain investments AOP did, so they claimed the deduction. Now AOP claimed the deduction, but can member claim the deduction for the same amount for the same investment? The answer is no. Once AOP got the deduction under ATC to you, then on the same amount, on the same policy, on the same investment, member cannot demand any benefit of deduction. Clear? Very good. Now you understood how to deal with member's income if share is known. Clear? Correct. But if share is unknown, what to do? Then I will simply tell the member's personal income is taxed. What I said? Member's personal income is taxed. Member's personal income is taxed. Share from AOP is ignored. So when the member's share is unknown, then share from AOP is ignored and only their personal income is taxable. Now why this is so? Because already you remember, yaar, they are paying, AOP is paying tax at maximum marginal rate. When they are already paying the highest rate of tax, should that income be again taxed? Unfair, correct? And moreover, how did we come to know about the AOP's income? By adding salary, remuneration, interest, commission, bonus paid to members. So now, that became a part of the income of AOP. Right? Even though it is paid in bank account of AOP, the salary bonus commission amount is not there. It is debited. It went to members' personal account. But still, when we compute income for income tax purpose, these are disallowed, added back. And now when they are paid, paying tax at maximum marginal rate, do you feel that the members need to again pay tax on such salary? Right? AOP paid it, right? So again taxing it is unfair. That's why when share is unknown, they simply said, when the share is unknown, they simply said that only personal income of the members should be taxed and AOP's share of income in any form will be ignored. But how to compute the tax of members? Right? You may be thinking. So I'll tell you one thing. I just wanted to convey you simple message. The If suppose here till now I was talking about so many aspects. But now this aspect talks about Vidya Bharati's income. So, till now what happened? Members' income decided, right? Ram Shams, Gan Shams income decided what tax rate will be applicable to Vidya Bharati. Till now. It's over. But now Vidya Bharati's income will tell that how to tax the members. Should the AOP's income be included or not? I'll discuss all that. Now come to the first, second, third, three points only in the table, then four steps. So concentrate on that thing. Simple. If AOP, that is Vidya Bharati's income, is less than the slab rate, less than the taxable limit. Definitely, now Vidya Bharati is not paying anything. If Vidya Bharati is not paying anything, will government say, okay, jane do, chhod do, aisa bolegi government? Never. Government will say, hey, Vidya Bharati's income is less than taxable income. And now, from that, these members are earning income and these are enjoying. No. Whatever you got from Vidya Bharati, right, that should be included in your personal income and on that you should pay tax. So who should pay tax? 
राम शुड पे टैक्स ऑन शेयर फ्रॉम एओपी प्लस हिज पर्सनल इनकम रियट इफ विद्या भारती इज टैक्स और विद्या भारती इज इनकम इज मोर देन द स्लैब मोर देन द बेसिक एग्जामेशन लिमिट और मोर देन द टैक्सेबल इनकम इन दैट केस राम श्याम घन श्याम इनकम विल बी कैलकुलेटेड हाउ शेयर फ्रॉम एओपी प्लस पर्सनल इनकम बट हियर दे विल गेट एटी सिक्स रिबेट राइट नाउ ऑलरेडी विद्या भारती पेड द टैक्स नाउ यू आर अगेन पेइंग द टैक्स ऑन द सेम सो यू गेट रिबेट अंडर एटी सिक्स एंड इफ सपोज विद्या भारती पेज टैक्स ऑन एम एम आर मैक्म मार्जिनल रेट देन इन दैट केस राम श्याम घनश्याम विल पे टैक्स ऑन देअर पर्सनल इनकम नॉट ऑन शेयर फ्रॉम एओपी सो शेयर फ्रॉम एओपी दे विल गेट बट इट इज नॉट टैक्सेबल ओनली देअर पर्सनल इनकम इज टैक्सेबल सो आर यू क्लियर विथ वॉट आई ट्राई टू कन्वे सिंपल हाउ दिज इम्पैक्ट ईच अदर यू अंडरस्टूड इफ विद्या भारतीज इनकम इज लेस देन द टैक्सेबल लिमिट देन द शेयर फ्रॉम विद्या भारती रिसीव्ड बाय राम प्लस हिज पर्सनल इनकम विल बी टैक्सड राइट एज पर द रेट अप्लीकेबल टू राम सेम वे इफ विद्या भारतीज इनकम इज मोर देन द टैक्सेबल लिमिट देन अगेन फॉर राम हिज शेयर फ्रॉम एओपी प्लस पर्सनल इनकम will be taxed and he will also enjoy rebate under section 86 and if suppose vidya bharti is taxed at maximum marginal rate then not at all an issue very simple then ram will pay tax on personal income not on the share from aop right this clarity you should have when i talk about right very good now i have to tell you something that 86 rebate 86 rebate 86 rebate how to calculate there are simply four steps right third fourth will merge if required for solving the problems but four steps are there the so first step calculate tax of the member calculate tax of the member simple tax means including health and education sir sorry i am wrong so first calculate the income as per step 1 and income means as we discussed till now how to calculate the income that income should be computed then step 2 says calculate tax including health and education sir that's it step 3 and step 4 let us combine now tax as per step 2 divided by income as per step 1 if you multiply it with 100 you will get average rate of tax but if you multiply directly as per step 4 with share of member from aop then you will simply get rebate under section 86 so what i said tax including sales divided by total income into share from aop if you do you get rebate under section 86 now when i say share from aop is it just the profit element or salary interest everything the answer is everything what the member gets from aop this is how you should understand okay no doubt should be there in your mind now for just summing up one two small points i'll tell is aop taxation difficult for you simple question i am asking is aop taxation difficult not at all if suppose member share is not known then forget everything mmr you apply 42.744 if suppose member share is known and their members income is less than taxable income then apply slab and if members income ram sham ganshams income any one of income 
is more than the taxable income then apply mmr that's it ha huh, for long term 112 a 10% for long term 112 20% for short term 111 a 15% lottery income 30% this is common aop closed no doubt should be there come to members members income if suppose AOP is taxed at MMR, then no issues, right? Share from AOP is not at all included in members' income. They pay tax on their personal income. So, no issues. But if suppose AOP is, is not taxed at MMR, then at what rate it would be taxed? Obviously, at slab rate. Correct? If AOP is taxed at slab rate and AOP has taxable income. Then definitely include the income from AOP which member received, right? Plus his personal income and calculate tax and claim the rebate under section 86. If suppose AOP is not at all taxed, less than taxable income, then simply personal income of member plus share from AOP will be taxed but no rebate under 86 that's it this way we should understand the concepts i simplified it and i hope you enjoyed this lecture